So with National Signing Day now behind us, we have got a lot we need to recap. From Oklahoma flipping a Michigan commit to LT Overton, the number three player in the class of 23, reclassifying to the class of 2022, to some intriguing comments from Lincoln Riley in regards to the transfer portal. Before we break into all of that, y'all know the drill. I want to hear from you. Hop down to the comments. Why for yes, N for no. Are you surprised that Overton has reclassified into the class of 22? And let me know what you're thinking. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification. I do constant college football content content you don't want to miss any of it and if you enjoy the content like and comment down below those interactions may seem small but they are massive to content creators such as myself and both getting picked up and maintained by the youtube algorithm but with all of that being said let's hop right into this and we will start with the oklahoma sooners who had just about as good of a signing day as you could have wanted sure in a perfect world the oklahoma sooners would have been able to capitalize on five-star offensive lineman devin campbell who ultimately went to cross-state rival texas but at the end of the day when you look at the totality of circumstances in regards to oklahoma from what's happened over the past two months from Lincoln Riley leaving to players transferring out to this class dropping almost really far down the line to Brent Venables coming in and really salvaging it and Oklahoma ultimately finishing with the number eight recruiting class in the nation in overall rank, but also achieving a top 10 class in the nation in average player rank. If you are an OU fan, given everything that's happened, you have got to be over the moon, and it was only furthered yesterday when Oklahoma was able to flip Cavante Henry, the defensive end, from Michigan. Henry is a very talented prospect and one that Brent Venables and company is happy that they get to flip from Michigan. And that's an area where Venables and company really did a good job yesterday. R. Mason Thomas, another defensive end, and then Grayson Halton, the defensive lineman or defensive end, really solid work up front by the Oklahoma Sooners. But Overall, I mean, it's just really impressive what that class was able to achieve given everything that happens, and it's going to be interesting to see how the Sooners go moving forward into spring practice and what that holds. A lot of talented players. Now it's time to focus on how the actual roster looks under the new regime, so I'm very interested in all of that. But speaking of the Oklahoma Sooners, they were one of the five teams listed for the number three player in the class of 2023, LT Overton, who's just reclassified to the class of 2022. Oklahoma, along with Ohio State, Oregon, Georgia, and Texas A&M are in the running for the extremely talented defensive linemen. And this is going to be a situation we've got to watch because every institution named is going to be doing everything they can to try and secure the commitment of Overton. And when we're talking about Overton, it's intriguing because of all the different connections he's had to various institutions. With Oklahoma, he's a legacy. With Texas A&M, his dad worked there. And with Georgia, he's from that state. So ultimately, this is going to be a very intriguing battle. It's absolutely a battle we're going to have to keep up with. As we speak right now, a crystal ball has been inserted in Texas A&M's favor. And if they're able to get Overton, they might have put together the best defensive line class I've seen in a really long time. But now we need to talk about Lincoln Riley's comments in regards to the transfer portal. Because this is an interesting situation. If I were to blank out the name and just show people the actual statements in regards to the transfer portal, I think many people would agree with the statement. However, this is a situation where the messenger absolutely matters. Because Lincoln Riley is the messenger, it dilutes the message. Because part of the points he was making is right now there's no checks in the transfer portal. Anything can happen, and it happens at such a rapid pace. But you can't be the guy saying that when you left an institution in the dead of the night, and then when you went to the new institution in USC, you've now been able to capitalize on players who followed you. So those very guardrails that you're saying should be put in place, one could argue should be put in place so that exactly what just happened in your situation does not happen again. Furthermore, Lincoln Riley had a great haul via the transfer portal, getting in-conference player Travis Dye amongst various others, and so it's kind of ironic that that's the guy that's kind of taking a stand against the transfer portal in its current capacity, the individual who's profited so much from the transfer portal. That was a little bit ironic to me, but it is going to be interesting to see what ultimately happens in regards to the transfer portal. And lastly, before we get out of here, the last thing I want to talk about is Alabama's class actually better this year than it was last year. Alabama's class rose to fame last year by being the best signing class in modern recruiting rankings, a mark which A&M passed this year. 
But the question must be asked, is Alabama's class better this year than it was last year? And the answer may surprise you because though I cannot give a definite yes, I certainly can't say no. And here's the reasons why. Because if we look, this year's Alabama class actually fields a higher average player rank in 95.20. In fact, the highest average player rank in the entirety of the country. And if that was the metric to ranking recruiting classes, Alabama would have another number one class. Last year's class had a stellar average player rank as well, but it came in at a 94.99. The difference was in point totals. This year's class comes in at a 322 as compared to last year's class is a 327. However, the key difference, and this is a key difference, last year's class took two more players than did this year's. So if you were to average the type of player Alabama was pulling in this year's class, put two more of those caliber players in this class, yes, Alabama beats the record they put out last year. And though I don't know that they beat Texas A&M, what we can say is that depending on how you look at it, this Alabama class is at the very least just as good as last year's. It just doesn't have the amount of players. So what a national signing day. Oklahoma getting in various prospects and flipping a very talented player in Kevonte Henry from Michigan. LT Overton reclassifying from the class of 23 to the class of 22. Lincoln Riley taking an obscure stand against the transfer portal. Having said all of that, I'm very interested in hearing from y'all. Hop down to the comments. Let me know what you're thinking. That's it. See ya.